CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. Here today, I'll be showing you how to use a PTZ controller from Avalonix. This is a model PT500. It's a network-based PTZ controller, joystick, whatever you want to call it, and a PTZ camera from Avalonix. I'm going to show you how to control one of these cameras from this controller over your local network. So to give you an idea, I'm outside looking at that camera that's mounted outside our warehouse and you can see it's a pretty decent camera, nicely mounted. It is actually not too big of a camera and uh, I'm waving at it. You can use that controller to move the PTZ around and uh, look around your property, look at people, etc. So pretty good way of controlling any Pantel Zoom from Avalonix Premium Series that we've got. So let's get started. So why don't you come on in? I'll show you how things get set up. So you, you, first you plug in your controller and it takes 12 volt DC power. You plug it into the power connection on the side here and then a network cable that's on the same network as the cameras. The unit starts booting up pretty quickly. While that's going on, I already have one of my cameras mounted outside. You can see the video coming from it. On my recorder, I've already connected it. That's step I'm skipping. That's we cover in other videos. Here, the only purpose is to show you how to get this controller to connect to and control one of these cameras. So once you're here, my colleague here will step in and show you how to log into the controller for the first time. Okay, first, when you boot it up, you are gonna be greeted with the date and time. So to log in, you're gonna hit enter, but actually first, before you can log in, you're gonna to need to initialize the PTZ controller. So we just use our factory default password of one zero lowercase i, capital L. And the important thing to note is I'm using the shift key on the left-hand side of this to switch and toggle between the different letter modes that are available. So if I switch between them, this would be special characters, this would be numbers, this would be lowercase, and this would be uppercase. So you need to switch between the different modes to be able to enter in the password. So I have my one zero lowercase i and then capital L the rest are all lowercase, so I'm on the lowercase option. I'm going to enter in them one at a time. So T, X. Notice I'm waiting a few seconds in between for that letter to turn into an asterisk before I'm entering it again. That way it saves that letter and I don't accidentally overwrite it. So now I have that password written. I need to use and flick the joystick to go down to the OK field, and I'm going to type the password in again, just to do it a little quicker this time. So flick the joystick to the right to make that process a little quicker. And I've entered in the password. I've entered in it twice correctly. If you were to enter it incorrectly, then you would get a message saying that they don't match. So I'm gonna hit enter, initialized okay. That means my password's matched. Okay, so I'm gonna now log in after initializing the PTZ controller. and hit enter. Okay, now, very important distinction here. Zone control is to control a camera that you already have set up as a zone. And then to actually set up a zone, you need to get into the menu settings. So we're gonna flick the joystick down, hit enter to go into the joystick settings, go into zone. You can also use the number pad to get into these numbered menus. So two or go down to zone and hit enter. So here I'm on ID zero, this would be zone zero. So I'm going to go ahead and configure zone zero to be my PTZ camera. So I'm gonna first flick down. You can give it a name if you want to, you don't need to, you can leave the name empty. Then to, on type, I need to go over to SD, which stands for Speed Dome, AKA or also known as a PTZ camera. Down at the bottom, I need to go to link. There are different link types for network and COM485. This would be if you had a coax PTZ. This controller actually works with and also works with coaxial PTZs using the block in the back of the PTZ controller. However, this camera is a network IP based camera over our network and we wanna access it that way. So I'm leaving it set to net or network. 
need to go down to the IP address. My camera is on .45, so I need to enter in that IP address. Make sure you're entering the current IP address for your PTZ camera or it won't work. We have the port number. This is the default port, leave it alone. Step eight is the default speed setting for the camera. It's on maximum speed. And then here we're gonna leave it on the default rule of DH2. That's just the protocol that it's connecting to the camera under. We're using the admin password or username. And then we need to go to the password and enter in the password for our camera. So I'm doing that. This happens to have a special character, so I need to go here and enter the special character. I've done that, so I'll click enter. Said it was successful. That typically means that the PTZ controller was able to just save the entry. It doesn't necessarily mean that your zone will automatically work. It just means that you didn't have any errors in any of your uh, things that you've entered into the menu. But provided you have entered it correctly, you can escape out of the settings by hitting the escape key flicking your joystick up to zone control, hitting enter. And again, this is the ID of the PTZ camera that we set. We use zero, which is the first ID. ID two would be the, or the second ID would be ID one, but we're just gonna use ID zero that we set up. It's gonna go ahead and attempt to connect. So if you entered the, any of the information wrong, although it was successful on creating the zone, it wouldn't have connected and you wouldn't see this screen. You would have received some sort of network error, username or password error, or some other error that's preventing you from getting to the camera. We entered everything correctly and we didn't have an issue with our password or IP address, and then we're in the camera. Now the tricky part is with this is sometimes you may not get control. So right now we are using the joystick. I'm able to you know, use the cardinal directions on the joystick to pan and tilt the camera and then twist the joystick to do zooming action. So we twist to the right to zoom in. So we're twisting to the right to zoom in. We twist to the left to zoom out. And I'm able to do this on the PTZ just by entering in the ID. So that's the basic function of getting a camera added to the controller and then getting to that PTZ camera from that zone that we've entered. There are also additional options here that you can configure for your PTZ camera and access them from these various buttons here next to the joystick. I'll pass it back to my colleague for additional comments. So I'm going to show you here what you can expect when you're controlling a pan tilt zoom camera. The reason people get a joystick controller is for fluid movement and fast movement. Usually you could use a computer, mouse, or your phone app. Uh, on a computer you would use the web interface or you would use the PC software and on the phone app you would use your fingers to tap and move around they're not as uh, quick as uh, using a joystick controller is so with a joystick controller if you have a uh, high power PTZ cameras you can actually zoom in pretty quickly and follow objects along and do surveying on a property so it's great for surveillance uh, that's where the PTZ controllers come in or let's say you're doing um, some sort of scenic view that you're showing to your viewers through your PTZ and you're using it for live streaming, you can even use the PTZ camera for that. We've even had customers using these cam uh, PTZ cameras as surf camps to look at um, what's going on on the beach in front of their property. So lots of different uses for using a PTZ controller. It's primarily the fluid movement you get, the quick zoom that you can do with it. What I wanted to show on the joystick are some of the LEDs you see on there. So on the right hand side, the power LED should, tells you that the controller is on. Of course, when it's on, you'll also see your on-screen display menu. The net is for established network connection going back to your switch. And uh, the RX and TX is when it's actually communicating actively with the device. This controller can be used with our smart PSS software with a Windows computer. So this thing does have a USB port. It comes with a USB cable in the box. And then you can also use it with 485 and 232 cameras, but those cameras are hard to find these days. That's not really what these PTZ controllers are used for. They're primarily now network-based controllers. A great utility for them is being able to tie them not only directly to an IP-based PTZ from Avalonix, but also to a 
DVR, such as an XVR or an NVR to control multiple cameras and even control the display you get on the screen. To make this more comprehensive, um, I think the one thing we did not show so far is that these controllers are IP based. So if you're wondering how to set the IP address for your PTZ controller, what we did was we went to setup to, and then go into menu settings, go to system, and then go to network. That will tell you if DHCP is on or off. So if you're connected to a network that has a router on it and it has DHCP servicing on, this will automatically get that. So let's say if we went back to IP address, turned it off, what happens then? Then it opens up this menu where you can put in the IP address and configure it for your controller. So you can always investigate that. That's covered also in the manual that comes with the controller itself. I'm just going to put mine back on DHCP, press escape, All right, and then hit enter to configure that. That's one. And then lastly, to sum it up, we showed you how to add this um, a, a camera directly to the contro controller. Now we're going to add let's say our recorder sitting right here. So um, we're gonna add the recorder itself by basically adding it as an entry. So if you could please show us how to do that. To go into menu settings, we go back into zone. We already have ID zero being occupied by the speed dome, the PTZ camera. So we're gonna flick over to ID one. So you just type in ID one. As you mentioned, we're going to go ahead and add a DVR, so I'm going to leave it set on DVR. There are a number of different devices you can add, such as a DVM, an NVR, a matrix, etc. Going back all the way back to DVR, and then we can get through the DVR through the network. We're going to enter in its IP address, 100. This is particularly for our DVR. Your IP address will be different. And keep in mind, under rule, if you could show us what other options are available under rule, yeah, these are the different protocols that it can connect with. So there's only one protocol, really. So a lot of people ask about whether they have Envy PTZs and this controller can control them. That is uh, not possible. This controller is made specifically for the Avalonix Premium Series cameras. And we're logging in using the admin user. So the default password on the Avalonix Premium that we like to use is the 10i capital L, then lowercase t x y h. So I do have to give it a different name. So because we had a blank name for the camera when we made the first entry, it recognizes that as a particular name. So it didn't let us enter that. So we're gonna do ID one. And then for the name, we do have to set a name. We're just naming it DVR, all lowercase. So it was successful. That means the DVR, we didn't have any errors this time. As you notice, we had a name, a duplicate name, so we had to change the name. And we'll go back to zone control. <clears throat> In zone control, we now have a DVR at ID1. So we enter ID1 and press enter. It's connecting to the DVR. Now you'll notice, like I mentioned, if you don't have a PTZ selected, you have a different screen on the actual keyboard, and then you'll, you'll sit here and play with your keyboard, but all it'll do is change the views on your DVR. Well, that may be useful for, you know, somebody who's attending your security camera system and they need to look at different camera views. They can easily toggle between them using the different joystick options. However, as we mentioned, getting back to the camera, we want to go ahead and control this PTZ from the controller through our DVR. So as I was explaining earlier, when you have a PTZ connected to an NVR or DVR system and you want to use that camera through the DVR, you do have to first do a a couple things to get to the PTZ through the recorder. So first we need to tap on the use button. Whoops, and that channel just so happens to be channel five. So I need to enter in channel five on my DVR and then click PTZ. So first you type the number of the channel that you wanna control, then you click the PTZ button. Now we're getting to the PTZ menu that we saw when we accessed the camera directly. And using the joystick, we're able to control that camera 
that's actually connected to the DVR, either through the network or directly, and then control that camera from the recorder, not directly to the camera. Okay. That's pretty much it. So let me show you one more time. So let's say you are starting from the beginning to go and access the device you set up. So you will, this is how you'll pull it up. So first you press enter, and then you type in the ID of the device. This is the ID of our DVR that we entered, and then hit enter. And then it's gonna connect. When it does connect successfully, it'll give you this message. And now let's say you wanna just flick the joystick around, watch what happens. It just goes and changes through channels. We only have one camera added on channel five, that's the Panto Zoom for this demo. So that's why you're seeing there's no video on the other channels. We did that on purpose. Now, let's say we want to control that PTZ. You would enter the channel number first of that camera you want to control. So it's five in my case, and then click on the word PTZ. Now it connects to that, and now if I try to control, it will move around the camera. So that's how you control a PTZ or many PTZs connected to a NVR or DVR from Avalonix. The main thing here to take away, uh, besides all the setup, compatibility-wise, these controllers are made specifically for the Avalonix Premium Series. We do have another series of controllers for our other AvaI Avalonix Series as well. This is for the Avalonix Premium Series of products. Last but not least, if you somehow lock yourself out of the PTZ controller or somebody set a password at your company that you're not sure what it's set to, you can easily reset it by going back to the menu. If you're in a NVR or DVR, you do need to hit the ID button first, which takes you back to the ID page or the menu and then hit escape to get back out, escape, escape. So you're probably at this screen if you're unable to log into the PTZ controller. To reset it, you need to press and hold on the escape button for 15 to 20 seconds. You can either use the clock on the PTZ or count in your head until that 15 to 20 seconds has expired. And then the controller itself will reboot as it just did, and it'll get back to the initialization page that we were at at the beginning of this video. So back on the date and time, hit enter, and now I would have to initialize the controller again. Hopefully this video gives you a solid overview of the PT500 PTZ controller for the Avalonix Premium Series. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.